Today we're going to take a minute to analyze every single weapon in the finals for Season 2. To make it more efficient, I'll divide the weapons list between each class. Every weapon will be ranked from F to S, well to be exact, from triple F to triple S. Stay tuned to see which one. I strongly advise you to pay close attention because the weapon you choose in the finals will have a strong impact on your capacity to go higher on the ranking ladder. Here goes another hard scope to the finals video. Light build tier list. So we are starting with the F tier on the light class with the dagger, which is probably one of the worst weapons in the game. As you will see, I am not the biggest fan of melee weapons in the finals. They will usually be ranked at a very low tier and um, no matter what the class is. But that being said, the dagger is specifically difficult. It is extremely short range, doesn't have any type of dash like the sword does. The only bonus you could find is if you do manage to get in the back of the opponent, you will be able to to put a critical hit which on light classes and mid class can have a stronger impact and somehow bring you the, the kill you're searching for but this is very difficult and I would strongly advise not to play it if you do want to go for a melee weapon the sword is a much better choice coming into the E tier we have the throwing knives which I've put just a little bit above the dagger because the, I feel like they are a bit more efficient the left click attack is actually quite rapid which means that you do have a chance to do something with it um, you with the double dash you would have a chance to get in get out of the fight maybe make a kill there and there the biggest problem i see with it is the right click attack which is for some reason extremely slow and actually quite dangerous and would put you in a very difficult position it does do some decent damage which is probably why they've decided to to make it so slow but it, it is just unreliable at this point and i would similar to the dagger not advise playing the throwing now is in the current meta moving on to the d tier with the sh 1900 this i'm gonna call it a fan service type of weapon um, i honestly don't see where it stands in the meta right now and probably doesn't have any any spot at the moment the double barrel type approach is is quite fun for little clips or, or players who are just looking to make some nice kills in there it is just very unreliable it has absolutely no synergy with the rest of the teams and the fact that this is a very short type of range compared to the rest of the meta which is more on mid-range or longer range um, this just feels very weird to play and i would say has no place currently in any type of rank mode moving up to the c tier or high d low c somewhere in between there with the m11 this gun is actually not that bad in the sense that you have very high rapid fire meaning that you have a very good chance to out trade your opponent even against heavy builds in some cases if, if you manage to actually target the head uh, at least for a few shots in there i would say this is actually a good gun for light oriented type of players because it is very much of a disruptive gun you go in you use your gadget kill get out of the fight and get away with it also in the c tier we have the 93r the new weapon for season two for the light class which feels like it is still a little light in terms of damage the fire output and the fire rate is actually quite good but with the damage you are going to struggle a bit especially since the three shots are quite hard to keep in line this is probably going to see a buff in the season two itself maybe for further down the line for season three but the gun feels like it is not yet ready for the actual meta that being said there is a very high potential for this weapon to become something very strong in the future another c tier weapon will be the sword itself uh, uh, warning you this is the only melee weapon that will have that high of a spot on the tier list for the finals the reason being that you do have the right click attack which is quite strong and if you do coordinate properly with your team which let, don't get me wrong is quite difficult with a melee weapon but if you do manage something you could actually pull off a nice offensive attack but this does limit you very much in terms of defense you will not have a lot to do there so yeah c tier seems like a generous option positioning itself on the high c low b tier we have the sr84 the reason why i'm quite hesitant here is because the sr84 is actually quite a very strong weapon um, the damage output is extremely strong you have a times two damage modifier for any headshots you put in which is quite rare for weapons in the finals the only problem being that 
you will have to dissociate yourself from your team entirely to make this viable, to take the proper angles and actually not have yourself put at risk because if somebody does spot you and gets closer to you, you will sadly have not much to defend yourself with. But if you do manage to keep uh, a vantage point or at least some safe spots without impacting your team too much, this will be a great weapon to use. That being said, I still believe it needs some tweaking, some rework to, to fit somewhere better. So this is a weapon to keep an eye on for the future. Entering the playable segment of the tier list, we have the V9S of the light class, which has one of the highest DPS in the game, uh, ranging up to 360. The only real problem with this gun is that once you fire, it does move around quite a lot, making it quite difficult to consider it a stable weapon for the light class, but it is on a good path. And I do believe that once we see one, maybe two more buffs uh, that Embark, I'm sure, will tackle in the future, this will become one of the top guns for the light class. Moving on to the A tier of the light class, we have the LH1, which is probably one of the strongest weapons in the game at the moment. The weapon itself didn't see any specific buffs lately, but it just feels uh, in a very good spot. The target click seems to be quite efficient. The bullet drop seems to be very light, meaning that if you do aim and click, you should expect to hit your enemy. On top of that, another very important factor of the gun is that you do get a times two multiplier for headshots, bringing the damage output to 98 in the head or 44 in the body, meaning that even with a hip fire shot or uh, any type of action fire, you will normally be able to fight your way out, whether it is on short range or longer range. And now for the undisputed master of the light class at the moment, and the only weapon I would see fitting the S tier, we have the XP 54 with a DPS output of 250, which is exactly the same as the F car, if I remember correctly. The strong suit of the weapon is mostly revolving around recoil fire, which is seemingly non-existent, no matter what distance you're firing from. So I would strongly advise that if you do want to run the light class right now, this is probably the most viable and most flexible weapon in the kit list of the light class. Heavy build tier list. Back at it with the heavy class and back to the F tier. I absolutely had to put a sledgehammer there because sadly it just feels like there is not much to do with this weapon. It is a very high output damage, that is for sure. The problem being that the high class is extremely slow and you don't really have anything to close the gap with the enemy. So the scale even goes up worse. Uh, the higher you go on the ladder, because people will know how to counter you, but nonetheless, um, even in lower tier ranks, this should not be played. The problem being that the only real way to kind of do something would be to go the enemy, uh, block him there, run up to him, and then put a hit. But even then, you're very much open to damage while running to the enemy, whether it's from the one you're trying to get or from any of his buddies. I would say the only real usage you could find for this weapon would be uh, the chaos it brings uh, through the destruction or the one-shot approach you can have with light classes. But even then, I would say this, this definitely belongs in the F tier and should not be played at the moment. Now, let's talk about the MGL32 for the E tier. And let me get this straight. The only reason why I haven't put it as on the same level as the sledgehammer on the F tier is because you have some kind of a range uh, to work with because they are grenades. But to be fair, this is probably one of the most annoying weapons to play with right now for the simple fact that the grenades have to bounce off once before exploding compared to the GL40 from the mid class that actually has uh, impact fire. This one is just very difficult to play with and I would strongly recommend staying away from it at the moment. There are much better and much, much more efficient weapons to play with on the heavy class and this is definitely not one of them. For the D tier we have the flamethrower which in this case is quite similar to the sledgehammer but just with a major difference being that the flamethrower is a bit more consistent to attack and hit multiple players at once meaning that if you do actually manage to close the gap and I'm gonna tell you straight away it's going to be a bit of a mission there especially against high skill players but if you do manage to close the gap you could be able to actually do some consequent sustainable damage um, and maybe break the defenses of your team on top of that you can combo the flame uh, the fire aspect of the flamethrower with gadgets and canisters meaning that this gives somewhat of a 
stronger fit than the sledgehammer but then again it does uh, rank quite low on the tier list and i would still advise putting it off for this meta at least kicking it off with the c tier on the lewis gun the lewis gun has faced off with a rough beginning for season two seeing multiple nerfs especially towards its recoil patterns rendering it quite difficult to handle right now with this weird wobble effect uh, when you're firing auto fire this added to the fact that the m60 has 70 bullets while the lewis gun only has 45 means that the two guns have probably switched places in the tier list even though having seen some strong nerfs over the last few weeks and since the beginning of season two the sa1216 still has managed to reach the b tier on the list today because of multiple factors the first being its strong damage output uh, via the quick fire and secondly thanks to this double reloading capacity it has with a very quick reload between every four bullets before you empty the magazine itself thanks to that you will have the capacity to burn through the life of light and mid-tier builds as well as with the help of your bodies and especially a healer through heavy tiers themselves also on the b list we have the ks23 i would personally have put it lower than that but we have to see what embark is obviously trying to do with this gun so it is the new shotgun uh, added to the heavy class for the season two as it stands it might not be there yet but it seems that embark is trying to push the gun by buffing all of its stats basically the only problem we're still facing right now is that the bullet itself is a slug type ammo meaning that you do have to pre-shot any enemy no matter what distance you're at and this just renders the gun a little unreliable it does combine quite well with the rest of the kit of the heavy class but it is still not there yet and to finish it off on the s tier we have the m60 for the heavy class which has done basically a little switcheroo with the lewis gun the lewis gun as we've dis discussed before on the season one was very strong they've been nerfed repeatedly and then because of that without even necessarily being buffed on season two the m60 kind of took its spot with its big size capacity magazine with 70 bullets and overall a quite strong dps of 220 it is now considered a strong type weapon versus the other options that might be available for this class medium build tier list Diving into the tier list for the mid class to finish it off, we have the Riot Shield, which I will have to create a new tier just for it. I'm going to call it the Triple F because this weapon should probably not even exist right now in the game just the way it is is completely dodgy um the the shield itself doesn't always parry all bullets i cannot explain it the stick itself takes some time to take out which makes no sense and the damage output is not even that interesting so this this gun we will skip over it quite fast just don't play it. In the D tier for the mid class, we have the R357, which has seen actually quite a few number of buffs throughout season one, with what I thought was going to be one of the top tier guns for season two. But sadly, I think Embark is struggling to put it exactly where they want to. As it stands, I would say the strongest suit of the weapon is its recoil capacity. So basically, no matter at what speed you shoot your bullets, the recoil will not be impacted, meaning that you can go for single fire or just like rapid fire and the bullets will not disperse any more than they would on slow shots meaning that if you are in a difficult spot you could use that at your advantage but the fire rate makes it quite complicated to get yourself out of a sticky situation especially at close quarters another d tier gun for the mid class we have the cl40 with four bullets per mag and a very slow uh, fully empty mag reload if you manage to somehow not get down to zero bullets and reload every time you're on one the gun does take a little bump up in terms of power also the grenades themselves will imp explode on impact making it much stronger than the mgl from the heavy class but that being said the gun is quite unreliable the the damage output is not very strong and I would say if you're playing mid-class, there are much better weapons to play right now that would combine much better with the rest of your team. On the C tier of the mid-class, we have my biggest disappointment of season two, the FAMAS. Sadly, I would have hoped it would have reached much higher, but the problem being that the iron sights are quite 
difficult to use right now. They do obstruct your view quite a lot. And plus on top of that, the, the gun shoots a three bullet burst and the bullets are quite difficult to control. I would even say it is reaching a near randomized type of approach right now. Um, the first bullet being the one you shoot for, but the second and third are quite difficult to, to control. I think Embark is trying to buff the weapon and will probably keep doing so uh, in the coming weeks, maybe coming month. But as it stands, the weapon is more of a fun type of weapon than anything competitive. I would say if you're going for full auto or semi-auto type of weapons, the FCAR or the AKM is still a much better choice. Jumping to the A tier, we have the AKM, which is probably one of the most fun weapons to play in the game right now, with its 36 bullet magazine, giving you the possibility to actually readjust your shots while auto firing, which is probably one of the only guns maybe with the M60 that have this capacity right now. On top of that, you have a quite strong DPS with a DPS of 200, which puts it in the higher tiers of the damage per second for all the weapons of the final. This is a very good choice. The only reason why it is not higher in the tier list is because firstly it has an iron sights which makes it a bit more difficult to aim but also I would say if we do have to put it in opposition to other weapons that are higher on the tier this is definitely not the best choice to go for. Sitting on top of the list for the mid class we have the model 1887 with its very strong damage per bullet, even though the DPS is not that high. But the reason for which it is not at the absolute top of the list is because this gun actually has quite of a high skill cap, the DPS being quite low, meaning that you do actually have to hit your shots if you don't want to risk losing. So if you are good with it, you will probably be able to decimate entire teams on your own. But for lower skill players, this might be more of a difficult one uh, that would probably rank lower in the tier list. The good thing about it is that anything below a heavy class will probably die under two shots if you are shooting towards them within a range of 0 to 15 meters roughly. Uh, above that you will see the damage start to drop off quite consequently so make sure to stay within that distance but if you are within this distance this is actually a very strong choice and our final gun of the day reaching what i would call the triple s tier is the f car with a 250 dps putting it on one of the strongest dps guns of the game available at the moment even though having seen some nerfs recently uh, especially at long distance fire with the recoil being a bit harder to control this gun still remains one of the strongest choices you can have, especially because of its uh, holographic sights, which is one of the only guns with one such uh, sight right now. I would say that this is probably the strongest choice, especially if you are trying to run with auto fire weapons. Um, so please don't hesitate, no matter how many people are playing uh, the, the F car in your team. Even if it's the three of you, it is still the best choice to go for. That is it, my friends. Don't forget that this list is absolutely subjective and totally open to debate. If you do want to discuss this further, we do have a Discord for which I will put it in the description down below. Don't hesitate to follow the channel if you did enjoy the video. We post those every single week. I do put a lot of efforts into bringing you the most high quality insights regarding the finals. At this point, I would say that the only thing left to say is that I will see you on the next one.